Hi, I'm Scott Riesbosch, president of Tailwind. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the Tailwind IQ3 Pro Smart Garage Door Controller. Before you start installing, hold your mobile phone up near the location where you plan to mount the Tailwind controller and check the Wi-Fi signal strength. If you only have one or two bars, you may need a Wi-Fi extender. If you have a Chamberlain, LiftMaster, or Craftsman garage door opener that has a round yellow learn button like this, or you have a Genie or overhead door garage door opener that has a wall control that looks exactly like this one with a gray body and black buttons, be sure to answer yes if you check out on our website because we're going to ask you a couple of questions if you have one of these openers because they need special adapters. The Tailwind IQ3 Pro consists essentially of four components. The power supply, the controller, the wiring harness, and the door sensor. It also comes with a hardware bag with wire clips and other accessories you'll need. The IQ3 Pro comes in two versions. The most popular version is for standard sectional garage doors that run on J-Track. We have a commercial grade sensor that mounts right on the J-Track quickly and easily for that kind of door. Here's a close up of what standard garage door J-Track looks like. It gets its name because the profile looks like the letter J. The other version of the IQ3 Pro comes with this universal commercial grade sensor, making it perfect for applications such as gates or doors that don't have a J-Track or even doors that do have a J-Track but may have a lifting bracket that slides up the rail and would collide with the other sensor. If you ordered the IQ3 Pro for standard sectional garage doors that run on J-Track, you need to check the door to see if there's any part that's mounted to the door that rides up along the J-Track that would collide with the sensor mounted to the track. If there's something attached to the door that does that, you need the universal sensor and not the J-Track mounted sensor. So now install the J-Track sensor to the J-Track. And squeeze it together by hand as tight as it'll go. Finish securing the sensor in place by tightening the set bolt with uh, an 8 millimeter socket. Now we need to mount the magnet to the door so that it's directly across from the sensor with the door in the closed position. And we give you two options for mounting the magnet. We give you a 3M adhesive strip as well as a pair of self-tapping screws. Either way, we'll let you mount the, the magnet to the door. Please remember that if you're going to use the double-sided adhesive, be sure to clean the surface first with the alcohol swab and make sure it's dry before you stick it. Also, you'll notice there's two sets of mounting holes on the, uh, on the uh, magnet, and that's so that you have a couple of options on how to position it on the door. So what we want to do is make sure that it's directly across from the sensor and the gap is less than two inches. If you ordered the IQ3 Pro with the universal sensor, it can fit really on any door or gate. Uh, so I'm going to show you how we're going to install it above the door, and then I'll show you again how to install it at the bottom of the door. So we simply put the sensor above the door, but at a distance high enough so that when the door rolls up, it's not going to collide with the sensor. So go ahead and mount that with the included screws now. Now that the sensor is mounted above the door, we need to again mount the uh, magnet to the door so that the sensor will detect the magnet when the door is closed. And we've included uh, this oversized magnet as well as a 90 degree uh, bracket for mounting it. But you don't actually have to use the bracket. Um, it's just there uh, in case it makes your installation easier. You can also just attach the magnet directly to the top of the door. But for this installation, it lines up quite nicely. Uh, we wanna make sure that horizontally we're aligned to the sensor. 
and um, we don't actually have to get it perfect vertically. We just want to make sure that the magnet is within two inches of the sensor when the door is closed. So I'm going to go ahead and just use uh, some of the included uh, 3M self-adhesive strips to put on here and we'll be all set. As usual, when we're using uh, any uh, self-adhesive strips, we have to make sure that we've cleaned the surface carefully with the swab, the alcohol swab, and make sure it's completely dry so that our adhesive strips stick. And we'll position the magnet just like that. There we are. And we can see it's aligned horizontally and within two inches of the sensor. The universal sensor can also be attached directly to the concrete floor and it's perfect for if you have one of those roll-up doors or if you're not comfortable installing it uh, above the door. So we position the sensor so that when the magnet's on the door it will be directly over the, uh, over the sensor. So I'll go ahead and mark the holes. I'll use the included drill bit that came with the sensor to drill the holes for it to mount to the floor. Before installing the sensor, you should vacuum out the dust out of the holes. Now that the sensor is permanently mounted to the floor, we're going to go ahead and mount the magnet to the door directly above it using either double-sided adhesive tape or screws. As usual, if we're going to use double-sided adhesive, we want to make sure that this surface is clean and dry before we apply it. So I align it so that the magnet is within two inches of the sensor when the door is in the closed position and it's aligned horizontally. Use the included wire clips and zip ties to neatly run the wire to the garage door opener. If you have one of the garage door openers that we identified at the beginning of this video, please don't follow this part of the instructions. Instead, your order would have shipped with an adapter. Please follow the instructions that came with the adapter. For all other garage door openers, we need to identify the two terminals that are responsible for controlling the garage door. And you can locate those on garage door openers using a pair of needle nose pliers or a bent metal paper clip. And all you do is short out the two terminals where the wires come from the door control over to the garage door opener. And if the opener operates when you touch those two terminals together, those are the ones you're looking for. Unplug the power from your garage door opener. On this garage door opener, we've identified that the white and the red terminals on the left side are the control terminals. So we're going to go ahead and add the tailwind control wires to those two terminals. For garage door openers with this style of terminal block, you simply press the button at the bottom with a screwdriver and then you can go ahead and insert the wires. The tailwind control wires are the white and blue ones. They're not polarity sensitive, so they can go in either terminal and it doesn't matter. However, the wires that are pre-existing on the garage door opener are most likely polarity sensitive. So if you take those out, you should return them to the location where they were originally. Plug power back in and also plug in the tailwind power supply. Now that we've got the white and blue control wires connected to the correct two terminals of our garage door opener, it's time to go ahead and plug the wiring harness in. You'll notice on the controller that there's terminals one, two, and three. So terminal one, or port number one, is where we plug in our wiring harness because we have one door in this installation. If we had door, uh, two or three doors, we would use port number two and port number three for door two and door three. And for the additional doors, you would have just ordered a, an extra uh, door kit for your system. So we'll go ahead and also plug in the power. And you can see once we plug in the power, the green LED power light comes on beside the power port and our status light starts flashing red to indicate that it's time to go ahead and set the system up using the mobile app. 
I also want to mention that we should not be mounting the controller quite yet. And the reason is, in order to set it up in the app, we need the QR code on the back. However, if you do go ahead and mount the uh, controller to a surface, it's not the end of the world because we also included the QR code on the front of the user guide for you. Download the Tailwind app from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store, launch it on your phone, and tap New User. Tap Yes. Tap to scan the QR code located on the back of your Tailwind controller or the front of the user guide. We have drawings showing how to connect the Tailwind system to some garage door openers. You can check to see if yours is listed here. If not, simply tap on Continue. Tap Yes. Confirm you have three check marks and tap Next. This is just one final reminder to make sure you have good Wi-Fi signal strength and tap Next. Confirm your Tailwind controller is plugged into power and tap Next. Confirm the status light is flashing red and tap Flashing Red. Using the included pin tool, press and release the reset button. Tap Next. After one or two seconds, the status light should start flashing blue slowly. Tap Yes. Enter your Wi-Fi password and tap Connect. Wait while your Tailwind connects to your Wi-Fi network. The status light will turn yellow once it's connected. Tap Yes. Give your device a name and choose the number of doors. Keep in mind you can change these later. Most people just name it Garage. Tap Next. Go outside into your driveway and wait for about one minute while your phone accurately establishes your location. Then tap Learn Garage Location. Tap Done. Tap Next. Enter your name and tap Next. Enter your email address and tap Next. Check your email for a verification code. Enter it here and then tap Verify My Email Address. Tap to accept the user license agreement. Set your password and enter it twice, then tap Next. Your Tailwind account registration is now complete. Your Tailwind controller will go online and this will be indicated when the status light turns green. Tap Start Hardware Configuration. Since we're covering all the hardware installation steps in this video, we're just going to skip through the hardware tutorial screens. Okay, time to see if it works. So now that we've got everything configured in the app and our controller is online, I'm just going to go ahead and mount it to the garage door opener. So I used some alcohol on that uh, and, uh, and then wiped it, make sure it's nice and dry. And I'm using a couple of uh, sticky pads included with the system. And I'll just go ahead and mount it to the side of the garage door opener. And once I'm done with that, I'll go ahead and put on some zip ties to clean up the wiring and we're all set. Please check out our YouTube channel where you'll find a lot more helpful videos to help you explore all the fantastic features of the Tailwind system.